Unspoiled Network podcast. This is Unspoiled, covering Redemptor, the second book in the Raybearer series, chapters one through five. In these chapters, Tarisai is avoiding her responsibilities in a series of distractions and changes of subject that I recognize myself and I'm not proud of, but also get very salty when they are pointed out. I just really related to her in this section. And then she does something pretty wild at her banquet. <laughs> Welcome to Unspoiled. Welcome to the show, everyone. I am Natasha. I'm Rashawn. All right, Rashawn. We are into the second book. How do you feel about the way this starts off? Uh, the the beginning of it was really, it was weird because uh, we're, we find out that it's only about two weeks after the end of the first book. Right. And it feels like a lot of what well, doesn't feel like we know for a fact. A lot has happened in these two weeks. Very much so. But also, the story hasn't even really started yet. Mm -hmm. You know, so it starts off just really like I, I appreciate what you say about her just like not wanting to do the thing. Yeah. Like she just has no interest in the thing that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, just like everyone trying to like, you know, nudge her in the right direction and, and tell her what she needs to do. And she is just like, what's over there? What? Someone calling yeah. me? Oh, I'll be right there. You know? <laughs> like she's pushing, she's pushing, she's pushing um, sorry, that, that's my phone. I didn't hear anything. It's, it's on vibrate. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> yeah, the impression that I really get from her is, is something that I deal with a lot, and that is a sense of being so overwhelmed that you just don't know where to start, and mm -hmm. so it feels like a, an utterly impossible task. Mm -hmm. And this is the kind of thing that, like, articles and studies will tell you like sit down and write the steps out yeah. but that requires me to think about the task that i'm overwhelmed by and don't want to think about mm -hmm. so it's sort of not gonna happen right i'm not doing it yeah thanks for your advice i uh i had actually shared it on my page a couple weeks ago but i had read this really interesting uh breakdown about executive function or executive dysfunction and mm -hmm. how some people have difficulty starting the task because they can't visualize the done mm, right yeah mm -hmm. and it was explaining how the way our brains typically work especially if you're neurotypical is that you visualize the end and then your brain works backwards. It tells you the steps you need to do to get there. Mm -hmm. But if you can't picture or visualize the end result, then like, how do you start? Right. And that's kind of, and I was just like, oh, that's really fascinating. And even though I don't have, and I said this on my post, I don't have any trouble visualizing the, like the done of the thing. I have, um, you know, other kinds of processing issues that I struggle with. Mm -hmm. But I just thought that was really, really interesting. Like, you know, you have to be able to see your end result so that you can get yourself there. I feel like I remember reading that and I didn't actually stop to think about whether that applies to me because like my instinct was, well, of course I know what it's supposed to look like when it's done. But I'm realizing now that's sort of like with creative stuff. Yes. But with just like, chores and things i don't ever really like picture the end result like do you picture what your sink looks like when there's no dishes in it before you start washing dishes is that i not in like i picture like i know what 
like if I want to clean up, right? And if I sure. come into a room and I'm like, all right, this room is everything is everywhere. Right. You know, I'll get in my mind of what it what it what it looks like when it's completed. What my idea of is what this room looks like when it's done. Everything is put up in the closet. Okay. And that stuff goes over there. Okay. That's what I'm that's what I'm working towards. Interesting. Then, yeah. But if I don't think about the end, then I'm just in the middle of a room with stuff. And what will happen is I will find that I pulled a bunch of stuff out. Mm. And then I'm just like, well, shit, this looks worse than when I fucking started. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but it's not a conscious thing. Like, I don't say, oh, I need to picture what the room looks like. Your brain just does it. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's kind of true. Like, I, I never, never really thought about it like that. But I'm gonna come in and see a bunch of stuff on my desk. And I'm like, ew, no, I, I don't like my desk to have stuff on it. I want my desk empty. And I just make it empty. So I guess that is what I'm doing. Yeah. It just doesn't feel like that's yeah. what's happening. And that's how it's supposed to be like, well, not supposed to be but the sort of what people take for granted mm -hmm. is that they don't have to think about it. The brain right. just does it in the thread. The person was saying, um, one of the things that they did with their ch child or a student or somebody, uh, is like, I think it was a kid. She was like, you know, getting them dressed every, having them get dressed in the morning was this like task that couldn't be accomplished. Like mm -hmm. every morning the kid would like spiral out and have a meltdown and be late for the bus. Fucking same. Right. So what she said she ended up doing was like taking a picture of what you look like when you're ready to leave the house. This is what you, you're working towards. Mm. So every morning the kid gets up and sees the picture and in the picture he's dressed. He's got two shoes on, you know, he's got his book bag, his cell phone, his keys, you know, he's dressed and he goes, this is what I need to get done. And so he can see it in the picture and then works backwards. And so he matches what's in the picture. And now like huh. every morning, boop, done, but he couldn't visualize it. So every morning it was like, Oh, where's everything? What am I supposed to be doing? Like, Oh, and then before you know it, the bus is leaving and you're not on it. <laughs> I used to be so bad with that. My mom would be ready to kill me, man. I was losing, missing the bus all the time. And yeah, she would always be like, just put things next to the door and have it ready to go in the morning so that you don't have to think about it. That's a very good thought. Good idea. Great idea. It's certainly an idea. Okay, so let's get into the book here. We start off with Tari Sai in the midst of starting to break her mentor out of jail. She just stay up in the mix. <laughs> Tara Sai. She really is doing a lot, a lot, a lot. They have this plan. I love that they're dressed in this sort of like, as these um, sort of death attendants mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, in, in the garb of these, these, this, I don't want to call it a cult, but like the, the sect that goes to administer the last rites. And yeah. there's all this sort of superstition around it, which, which, which tracks, you know? Oh yeah. People definitely. everywhere are like weird about death, you know? Uh, it's so funny how we are about that too, to the point where we're just like, Ooh, you, you're a funeral director. That's creepy. I could never date a funeral director. You know, like, <laughs> we're just, we're just weird. We're weird nonsense species, but, um, death might be catching <laughs> yes just uh it is that's not untrue i mean it can be it can be <laughs> we live in a panini right now <laughs> but uh so everyone is just giving them space you mm -hmm. know as they're on on their little fucking adventure and um i, was I don't like, know why that sounded so <laughs> condescending but i get it it's fine but um and it's her and Kira and in Bali. And uh, I love this um, conversation that they're having because that is, is decided that he deserves this punishment. Yeah. That this is a debt that he has to pay. He has tremendous amount of guilt, obviously, about killing the emperor and um, breaking his vow, his oath. And it's just like, no, I'm supposed to die. And he ha it feels like he has to like restore balance to things somehow, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. um, honestly I do kind of get. Like I think it's totally the wrong call when your friends are willing to sacrifice themselves like right. this. Just fucking respect right. that. But also <laughs> I kind of get why he's I, struggling. <laughs> I love that the uh, 
they bring they basically are like and Bally has to come here because once he sees her all of that yeah. other stuff's gonna go out the window and it really does work that way like it yeah really does work it's i kind of was like all right i don't know if this is and nope it, he no nope. she's the one who's just like and what about me and he's like Fuck. crumbles i think the actual word is like crumbled all mm-hmm. of that just go something like this crumbled like salt and water or something like mm-hmm. that like the minute he sees her and you're just like yeah that'll do that sometimes you know mm-hmm. you catch feelings for somebody it will really just everything else goes out the door um and yes, yeah, so I'm like, oh, all right, we're starting with like a caper. Okay. <laughs> and they go and uh, there's this wonderful moment of uh, Terrace I being like, you could have melted this lock weeks ago. What? Yeah. She you could have the key <laughs> to try and open the lock for him. And he heats the key up to the burning point that she has to drop it. And yeah. then is like, Wait a second. Right? <laughs> like, we're doing all this, and you could have just waltzed out of here at any time. <laughs> I really appreciated that being mentioned because, you know, I forget yeah. what his hallow is, and it doesn't occur right. to me the practical uses of it like that, mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm. So, appreciate yeah. it being mentioned. Yeah. I had forgotten about his hallow until she talks about the letter that he sent her, and he, he had written on, like, used it, you know, to write on, like, leather or something. Yeah. And that's when I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. He can do the thing. But I won't lie. My brain didn't immediately go to he can get himself out of prison. I was Not at like, all. Oh. I was like, oh, that's right. That's what his hollow is. So that moment was really, like, it was actually kind of funny. And I like then... the idea that he uses his hollow to mark the, like, area on the roof where it sits. <laughs> uh, Thaddeus was here. <laughs> W U Z. That is that is plus and Bali forever. Little, <laughs> little four forever. Forever. <laughs> oh and man! So, you know we're off to like a rousing start. You know they mm-hmm. they they get him out. He he decides he's gonna you know try to save his own life for love. And him and Bali are gonna have this life somewhere together. It's also funny too because we find out that there is a place where they sit in the council and it's like the fucking whatever the Dothraki thing was I asked about in the last episode. Like, yes. They really, they really- <laughs> I had forgotten all about this so when you asked me that and I didn't say anything I wasn't being coy I didn't remember. So. But, uh, but yeah so like it starts off really like kind of like oh okay they're gonna fucking save Thaddeus and they're gonna go out and have a life together and this is fantastic. They split up. Kira and Mbali go one way. Her and Thaddeus go the other way. And then the weirdest fucking thing happens. Super weird. I don't know. I don't know what to do with this. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what this is. This is a... It seems like a child redemptor who maybe did not escape from the underworld was sent up on this assassin mission, mm-hmm. you know, and then Terasai watches him just sort of get sucked back down into the earth as if he were never even there. And I, I don't, I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. I, did, I don't like, it, she's running through her brain. She's like, well, the, 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 the Biku wouldn't do this. Like, you know, this is not normally how they move through. This is not how they act. Yeah. You know, this isn't what they do. So. Which, uh, it's like a very unusual circumstance, though, Tari side, the fact that you're offering yourself. So, like, I don't know what effect that has on what they normally do. Right. Because, you know what I mean? So, yeah. I get what she's saying, but I'm also kind of like, I don't know what other explanation could there possibly be it doesn't like it like if i guess what i'm stuck on is if they were behind this and it they kind of have to be Mm -hmm. you know unless there is something else which is possible because i just started this book there's something else going on in the underworld that i don't know about yet like Mm. there's there's like there's another level of stakes right that i don't did that, that, <clears throat> excuse me that we don't know about just yet maybe it will make more sense if Terrace i actually you know when she goes down 
maybe it'll be you'll be like oh that's what that was right but for right now i cannot make heads or tails of it and then why would they kill Thaddeus? like why not just end her you know that's a good question I don't know, but then, but then, like, I, I don't know. It's too early, it, but it was. It's just so it's so weird. I was like, "What the fuck?" It's real weird. And then we find out that, um, you know, she she tells uh, her council siblings like what happened, and 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 they believe her again, which is just really, I guess, being connected by the Ray really does, uh sort of foster a level of trust <laughs> right you know that goes beyond what you would normally have with a person because this is a crazy fucking story that she didn't have any witnesses and she tells them and they're all like all right well we're gonna like scour the town in the palace looking for this weird ass kid that you're describing and they can't find any evidence like there's nothing Gina's like we we searched everywhere this whole thing is so like <laughs> not all. So the kid like shows up out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. She tries to get a memory. It's nothing. Zilch. Nothing. She has never ever experienced anything. Like they were there's just like a void. And, and when he shows up, her like glyphs on her arms start to glow mm -hmm. blue and burn and mm -hmm. cause her pain. And when she asks the kid like, "Where is he from?" What the little bit. Because first he's just talking and like it, like he's it's clear he's just saying something that he's been told to say, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's like a quick like a moment where he's trying to like answer what he is and where he's from. Because she's like, "Who are your people? Like, where are you from?" And what he references is from like hundreds of years ago. It's some like 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 it'll be like you talking about being at Gettysburg or some shit. That was the you exact know what I mean? That I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And she's just like hold up so if they have been sending re redemptor children for generations and generations it's possible that their spirits would you know could still just be trapped down there mm -hmm. and then they could use their spirits to do and i say they and like i don't know if it's the abiku or whoever but like could use their spirits to do their bidding in all this these kind of weird ways which if i'm not mistaken we have not heard about yet, yeah right yep. so that's just a whole other uh First of all, it, it it makes the whole like redemptors and going to the underworld like even more horrifying because I yeah. I had been thinking of it as kind of like um you know it's it's awful and and the the kids that make it out like win and I just figured the ones who did make it out just died like I hadn't really thought about like oh no their spirits and their souls are just trapped down there mm -hmm. you know like like a like a hell you know like a living eternity like a christian sort of hell or even right. you know greek or you know what other mythologies but I hadn't really thought of it that way I just thought like oh the kids go down there they don't make it they're dead okay mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah and the the whole like the kids talking in a monotone which somehow also makes this extra creepy so when she tries to get his memories back and she pulls something that causes him to be like oh my parents died at this battle it's the only time when his monologue or his monotone mm. breaks and he mm -hmm. has like a tone and a sound to him and a, mm -hmm. and she says that he like actually sounds like a kid finally mm -hmm. all of a sudden and um when Thaddeus is like let's just bless him that's what he's asking for we'll get it over with he comes closer and she smells like yeah yeah dirt like dirt and, and rot and like yeah. and she's like what is yeah. this this is yeah. not right and Thaddeus bends forward to start blessing this kid and he pulls a knife and cuts his throat yep and yep I'll tell you what kids I was so pissed <laughs> yeah i uh i was i um i don't know what i thought when she started talking about like the smell and being like oh no what is this what is this what is this mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but i wasn't thinking it was going to be that no you not know? at all that just wasn't wasn't on my radar at all um, yeah blah, blah, blah. yeah <laughs> but uh in so my that, professional <laughs> opinion <blah, blah>, blah. <laughs> <laughs> so like that's that's like how this book's starts mm -hmm. <laughs> it starts like really 
you know, right up near 10. Like we're just, we're just going in. Um, no, like, you know, easing up to it or anything. We're just, we're just, <laughs> you know, phantom corpse children are murdering our prison escapees. And, Yay. <laughs> uh, so yeah. And then this is, this is, this, uh, this bit too, um, because that is his, you know, in heaven or on heaven. I don't know exactly what they're grammatical. Yeah, I'm not sure he's, either. He's not, he's not in heaven. At heaven? At. He's at heaven. <laughs> yeah, let's say that. And uh, there are, like, everybody is waiting for this execution. This, this You know, it's a big deal. He mm-hmm, killed mm-hmm. the emperor. That hasn't happened in 500 years, you know. So it's a, it's a huge, huge deal. And there are like children chanting this little this little rhyme about how his head how his head's gonna roll. <laughs> I swear to God, I was just like, "What the fuck?" And it, and I think it's uh, uh, Kira who calls them like brats or something, mm-hmm. and she says that before you know exactly why they're singing this. So I was mm-hmm. sort of like, "Brats, they're just this. These books have been full of." kids singing what's the problem <laughs> and then it turns out they're basically being like ha ha your head's gonna be rolling on the ground soon and i was like oh wow yeah that's that yeah. is dark that's, okay it's really dark for like a bunch of children to be singing mm-hmm. it made me laugh too because i was thinking about i don't remember all of them but you know like all the, the little rhymes that they you know you say as a kid and yeah you find out later that they have like very kind of dark origins <laughs> just like like what is the uh, ring around the rosy yes uh <laughs> no <laughs> there's a lot of mm-hmm. there, i really was thinking when the pandemic was happening like are we gonna get any other ones of those because ring around the rosy is supposed to be about the plague and i was like are we gonna get a pandemic rhyme but i don't think so i don't think that's happening. i mean if it did happen i'm sure it's on tiktok somewhere <laughs> probably um oh oh and I forgot to mention too, this kid when 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 Tarisa asked him like, "What are you doing?" He says that we need to keep your reputation intact for our purposes. And she's like, "What do you even mean?" And because he doesn't want her besmirched with the accusation of letting this murderer free from this prison. The effect is that everybody now thinks that she killed Thaddeus, mm-hmm. which isn't exactly super helpful to her reputation either. Like it, it maybe could be depending on how they spin it, which we have that talk later. Yeah. Yeah. But it does feel a little bit like, I don't know, which is, I don't know. You're like helping <laughs> somebody escape or being willing to murder them in cold blood. Yeah. I mean, um, her council sister is like yeah we could definitely spend this Mm -hmm. you know um but i mean no one had to necessarily know that she was involved in the escape their plan was pretty solid so the whole thing about you know the whole you know besmirching your reputation who was going to know yeah (laughs) Um, i don't know i guess this fucking kid knew how did he know that's my question who fucking talked (laughs) I love too like the very opening. Uh, this threw me off too because the first line of the book is that uh, what her name was, and I was like, "Why are we talking in the past tense?" Like, I'm really, really nervous. And then it's it nothing. Like, I, I wasn't sure like what the first chapter was going to be, and it ended up not being what I thought. So I was like, "I don't know why she opened like that." That that I didn't like it. <laughs> I'm like, why would you start the book? Put like you on that? edge. <laughs> yeah, fair. But um. So yeah, this oh, good lord, <laughs> it sucks. I hate I, um, this. I want to. I'm just scrolling to the part where the the kid really just like shows up after uh, they get Thaddeus to agree, and um, where is it? Uh, I'm sorry. I know you hate when I do this, but I don't. <laughs> have, I don't have like the book book. I have the Kindle, but uh, I feel like it said one other thing I wanted to talk about. Um, the fact that she he she asks who he's working for and he says I'm your servant. That's it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and she throws some holy water at him and it's just think, water. Thinking think it would do something. <laughs> Kid just is like, hey, like, like, what was that? Like, Looking down at him. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
was something about that that really cracked me up. Just what the fuck. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, so this this I am your servant thing that made me think maybe. All right, so if she's a redemptor, she's she's all right. Question that you probably can't really answer for me. She is a redemptor, sort of in spirit only. Right, because she hasn't actually gone into the, but she's got the the glyphs on her, so she is a redemptor now. Yeah, like sort of officially, right? Even though she hasn't actually gone to the underworld yet, she is. I think that counts, right? Yeah. So, but she's also an empress, right? (laughs) So I wonder if there's some sort of way that it can like crosses over where like her standing as an empress carries even into this role as a redemptor Hmm. and so because because if she has servants if she has redemptor servants i still don't understand why they would do this and kill that is i don't know how that serves her at all i really don't right but i'm trying to figure out the whole i am your servant thing because the way I was thinking about the Redemptors, especially the ones who are trapped in the underworld, wouldn't, if they were in service to anyone, wouldn't it be the sort of demon spirits that that reign down there? So why would she have someone referring to her as their servant? Like, I don't know. I'm trying to, hmm. trying to, I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm anywhere near the right track or not, but it's, it's that, that whole I'm your servant thing was really, really bizarre to me. Yeah. Um, and all I could think of was like, well, maybe she just, you know, maybe her station somehow transfers. I don't, you know, it makes no sense, but I don't really understand how any of this works yet. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but, uh, yeah, there's uh there's still a lot of uncovering left. So, okay. Then we, we go into I just d- ent- what? I just I just saw the the very sentence uh he says that this this kid creature cuz she keeps <laughs> calling it a creature refers to her as the Empress Redemptor. Right. So, does that mean that my theory was correct or is that just a title and it doesn't really mean anything? He the creature calls her the Empress Redemptor. As if like she's still in like she has power. Other people have called her that as well. Have they? Yeah. All right. All right I'm going to put a <laughs> pin in. I'm going to put a pin in that cuz I think I think I'm on to something. I'm close. All right. Um so yeah, Thaddeus goes down. This whole thing is just awful. Um, and he says, your map's still blue. It'll go purple once you join us. Then the ground closed over him. He vanished, leaving me alone with Thaddeus's body as a gaggle of courtiers rounded the corridor. And we cut to chapter three. And she is kind of losing it. Yeah, she's been up in her room. Mm-hmm. Has a, and you know what? I'm not mad about it. Same. She's been in her room, uh, a mixture of really not wanting to face everybody. And like, how do you, what do you say? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, while she's been hiding, you know, people have been chatting. Yeah, and and the fact that she hasn't been out and about has lent itself to people gossiping about what happened, and so everybody is like, "Girl, you got to come out. You got to show your face. Like you gotta, you gotta let everybody know who you are and and what you are. And hiding in the room is not serving you." And she is just like, "But I like it up here. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to be out there. It's very safe <laughs> and alone up here, and mm-hmm. I don't have to watch any more people die. Yeah. The book literally starts with nobody that she loves is going to die again. Yeah, and the end of the chapter." Well, yeah. not that same chapter. The next but, one, but somebody right away. has died. Yeah, yeah. and and it's a re- and they were she reminds us in the first chapter too that because uh, she's going you know through the list of people that she cares about and that that is was important to her. That was her mentor. You know, yeah. we didn't spend necessarily a lot of time with him in the first book, but we understood that he was who was training her 
for her role yeah. on the council as high judge, you know? So he was a really, really important part of her life. And coupled with the guilt that she feels about telling her mom about the relationship with Mbali, and she blames herself because she told her mom, her mom then used that as leverage, and that's how she was able to manipulate him into killing the emperor. <sighs> so she has got layers, Tara has got layers and layers of guilt. And now she's trying to rescue him to sort of assuage some of that guilt and make things right. And instead... He gets murdered in front of her by mm-hmm. some some ghoul who then claims to have been doing it in service of her. Yeah. You know, and just like, oh, my girl can't catch a break. Honestly. <laughs> right? Like, it does feel a little you bit know? like, all right, already. You know, and she's Enough. like, she's, you know, she has done so much. Um, I don't want to, not necessarily good, but like, she has such good intentions. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and she's just desperately wanting to do the right thing and and take care of the people that are important to her. I love the bit, too. And she says something about uh, how all she ever wanted was a family. And she managed to cobble together some semblance of family, even though it's dysfunctional. It was hers. Right. Mm-hmm. And she's willing to do whatever she can to protect it. And it's like everything she does. Don't you hate that feeling too? Like the the more you try to make the thing right, Ugh. the more out of control it gets, you know? It's so um, true too. You know, and she's just like desperately trying to protect everyone she cares about, but you can't. Yeah. You, you can't. Um, granted, this is an extreme example, but but like in the even in the, like the real world, you know, we do we do everything in our power to try to control and protect and yeah. There is just so much that is outside of our hands that we just can't do anything about. And that feeling of like powerlessness mm. really. <laughs> it has literally caused us to invent God. Yeah. That yeah. is how <clears throat> intense that feeling is. Yeah. And so this, that this, I feel like there's in the, in the, the chapter five ends with her kind of coming into some semblance of power, mm-hmm. but, but, but like right after things go left with that is up until that moment in chapter five, she really does feel like she feels like she has no power. Like things yeah. are just out of her control. She doesn't know what to do. She doesn't know where to start to try to fix anything. And even like, you know, she feels like she has no power, but then there's like the fear of like, what if I do have power and I am just really fucking bad at this mm-hmm. and i i just ruin everything because everything i have tried to do has gone wrong mm-hmm. so why should anybody trust me yeah and yeah. and sign on with me when i'm yeah. just the hot mess express yeah and she's on this like her whole mission is about getting people to sign on mm-hmm. right like that's that's the whole thing she has to accomplish in this in these two years that she's been given uh and that's sort of her frame through these first chapters too is how are these people going to love me? Yeah. How am I going to get these people to love me? Which is funny because I don't know if it was explicitly said at the beginning of the first book, but it was an undercurrent always in her life. It's like, how are people going to love me? Yes. You know, and here she is once again in this position of like, I need people to love me and I don't believe that they're going to. Yeah. Like, why Why would they? Who am I? Look what I've done. Why would they love me? Mm-hmm. You know? And Jeet tells her, what does he tell her at the very end? He's just like, you're always worried that people are uh, going to, like, be against you, be your enemies. But it's going to, what is he, something about. He says it's, it's going to be, be harder. harder for you if they love you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yep. <laughs> and, you know, especially because he said that I think in that same conversation, that she's going to have to get used to people being willing to die for her mm-hmm. because people are willing to die for the things that they believe in. Yeah. And uh, she sure doesn't want to hear that. Yeah. This is a, I think that's the same piece where uh, he shows her his memory of her when she did like the, it wasn't the treaty. It was the, um, not when she goes to the treaty renewal, but when she did like her her her, her first ruling her ruling right yeah and she, and she gets to see what 
Jeet saw, which is he was facing the crowd. Right. So she gets to see how everybody reacted to her and um, like just how here for it they all were, mm-hmm. you know, and how ready everybody was to be supportive of her and like ready to love her, quite frankly. Mm-hmm. And she hadn't seen that. We find out later that uh, this has, like, been a good thing for her reputation, but has also led to some people thinking that she's, like, extremely naive and not to be taken seriously. Mm. And I appreciated that bit of nuance being added into things, that she's not just, like, an unalloyed hero. Some people are like, what is she doing? She's just a kid. Come Mm. on, you know? Which is exactly how you would react if you heard that, like, you know, a 16-year-old decided to throw something in the emperor's face yeah i love to the reminder of how young they are when they talk about uh her and dia when they are going to go meet like these all these these emissaries and how they have only been a council for like five years they were supposed to have you know decades yeah to grow together they are the youngest ruling you know emperor and empress now uh, in I think he's his history. I think, because, yeah, you know, they're they're literal teenagers. Mm-hmm. You know, they're you know, it, they, the emperor with his almost you know practically immortal. You know, he's supposed to live to be a hundred, mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. and uh, you know, things went a little differently, and now <laughs> you've got like a bunch of sixteen-year-olds. Life comes running you fast, shit, you know. Yeah. Mm. So. This, uh, there's also this moment here that I really liked when she's like, you know, still in the midst of ignoring Kira, telling her she needs to do things and whatnot. (laughs) She's uh, going through a doorway and there's mosquito knitting that grazes her cheek. Usurper, whispered a disembodied memory. Where is she? Where is she? Where is she? And this is just like the memory of the emperor pacing, like wondering where her mother is. There's something really creepy about that. Yeah. I uh, There's a couple of mentions of her because now that they're like, they have moved into like the palace proper now because, mm-hmm. you, know, you know, they're in charge and they are just memories everywhere bouncing off of every fucking thing. Yeah. Uh, there's a moment where she, she um, thinks to herself that she desperately would like to have like the memory of the, would have been like the first empress whose name I can't remember. Ayatoro, I think. And how, but it's so far back, she can't, like, get anything from it, you mm-hmm. know? But there are all these other memories bouncing around. Everything she touches. <laughs> that she does not want to fucking yeah. have anything to do with. There's <laughs> <sighs> also a wonderful little moment where uh, she walks into one of the rooms because the uh, the palace is set up. Like, this is when they're talking about how young they are, too. Because the palace is set up with this... Uh, like all the rooms in a in like a circle with a hallway that interconnects mm-hmm. and then like a little salon in the middle because after you get to be a certain age, um, you don't have to like be up on each other because your ray is so strong. Right. right. So like in the children's palace, they were all like sleeping on one pallet together. But here in the main palace, they all have their own bedrooms. But because they're also so young, they're all just like all on one bed together. And she she walks in in the middle of like they're like, oh, we were just we were just hanging out, nothing going on here. Yeah, we're <laughs> just half naked for like you know, experimental we're just, reasons. We're, just, we're telling stories, couple you know. jokes, couple jokes. <laughs> and then uh, one of them is like, uh, you know, we're not breaking the law. And then another one is like, well, you know, sometimes when Tara falls asleep, we uh. We know what she's thinking about. Jeez. She's breaking the law. <laughs> Although I wonder if she is because she's on the council, but she's also an empress. So does she get to have yeah. her dalliances? I guess, right? Like, technically, yes. But uh, but she she uh, tells herself that you know she's just as guilty as breaking the law as they are. She doesn't seem to think that she's exempt. I mean, it did start before she was. Yeah. anywhere near being empress so i guess if you're going to be fair with yourself about it i mean g tells her like you just you, you're an empress you can just do what you want to do that whole moment right <laughs> everybody in this scene is pressuring her about going to this banquet and how it's on her behalf that it's even being thrown and 
it's her responsibility to go and all this stuff. And mm-hmm. then G is just like, you're the empress and you don't have to fucking go. You just do whatever the fuck you want. You run shit. And she's and to which like, she's like, what's your angle here, buddy? She's like, are you trying to reverse psychology me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's like, uh, that seems kind really of com- overcomplicated. Why, yeah. <laughs> Why would it? <laughs> It seems like a lot of work. I, I love her being like, oh, right. You're not a courtier. So that <laughs> does sound ridiculous to you. But trust me, some people would have done it that way. <laughs> um, But yeah, this whole thing, it's like a really tough, like she starts off with just Kira and Kira getting frustrated with her trying to tell her to go and her literally ignoring what kira is saying to her not even answering or oh, yeah. acting like kira has spoken at she, all she's having a whole other conversation about yeah. like nonsense <laughs> <laughs> and then she, this is when she walks in on her friends and all of them are suppressing her as well and then at one point she kind of begins to sort of like you know have a moment and they all cut off conversation with her and start the ray and start talking about her yeah and she can pick up pieces and then finally they like shut her all the way out and no she i think she bounces out um yeah she finally does after she first breaks through and she realizes that there there are people thinking like maybe she isn't strong enough to do this and she gets really upset which uh, they try to keep you from hearing that, girl. So maybe next time you'll give them their privacy when they lock you out of a conversation. I'm just saying. Um, and there's a conversation in the midst of this that is interesting. Um, the Kunleo family claimed nearly every massive natural resource on the continent after establishing the empire. Quarries, river mills, lumber farms. Why do you think the imperial treasury never runs dry? Mm -hmm. The Kuleos generate so much wealth from raw resources, they barely even touch their revenue from taxes. Oh, but don't all those places have workers, villages that depend on them? How are Dio and I supposed to keep track? You don't. Nobles manage the mills and quarries. Take a cut for their trouble, of course. The crown only interferes when nobles need reinforcements muscle Mm -hmm. and uh that sounds awesome (laughs) (laughs) yeah it um there's a i forget which council person it is but one of them is in charge of like defense Mm -hmm. you know i think it's maya zaddle is that uh i cannot remember but they're talking about like like heavy armaments you know like water buffalo and tanks and shit it is maya zaddle yes 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 um and, you know, it's funny. When we first entered this world, you know, it seems very, um, everybody's okay. Everybody's happy. Everybody gets along, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's a beautiful realm and empire is just and fair. And and then like, all these little cracks, which are, you know, often the case. You start seeing the cost yeah. of this wonderful world that has been built, you know. Who's actually paying it? Who's paying that cost? Mm-hmm. And and like every other situation, it's the people who have the least amount of power. Whether it's Always. the people from you know Songlanders or or these villagers or whoever. Um, and I'm really curious as we go on, as Kira learns more and more about the cost of things, you know. What kind of changes she tries to enact? Hmm. Um, Kira or no, I'm sorry, Tarasai. Tar- 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 um, so yeah, I'm really because she doesn't seem like she knew any of this. She never even had to stop to think about any of this. No, yeah. And all, all of her years of training, of being a you know an anointed of the council, none of this has come up, which is kind of surprising, well, considering like- that she's like justice. You know, but right. the way Just, things work, like basic economic stuff wouldn't have come up, but I don't <laughs> I, know. I imagine like, I forget everybody's role on the council, but uh, maybe there's a treasurer who's more in like a master of coin almost, <laughs> 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 you know, uh, because they all have these different things that they like are focused on. It's their little area of expertise right. and that's what they do. So they probably have a whole other person. 
who's mm. just like, oh, no, this is what I do. You know, I'm in charge of this bit and you're over there with the law and she's over there with the, you know, the blessings and this was over here with the horticulture and yeah. <laughs> horticulture. Horticulture. What a weird <laughs> word that is. Um, so this conversation, like we said, devolves and she runs to the roof and is f there's Teresa there already who is doing her um th green thumb thing growing she's got this thing she's doing with the vines this yeah thing. bonkers <laughs> <laughs> forcing waxy kuso kuso leaves to sprout flower wilt and sprout again over and over until they achieved her prim standard of perfection <laughs> And the, these uh, vines are helping them, like, magnify their ray. Yeah. This is wild, right? Yeah. Like, at one point, she's, like, up on the roof, and she could hear what they were talking about downstairs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And this is something that she uses at the end of the final chapter in this section. Um, so, it's apparently uh, quite potent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But as of right now, she's just like, you know, everybody's right. And Tara's like, how did you hear? And she's like, I can hear it so well tonight. Mm -hmm. And then I Ling and Sanji have followed her up. And I Ling at first tries to be sort of like, you don't have anything to worry about. All these stuffed shirts, you know, that kind of thing. But it's not really landing. And then Tara Sai says they think I murdered Thaddeus. And I Ling does her let's play it let's mm. spin it that is his death removes any remaining suspicion that our empress redemptor was in league with the lady on the contrary empress tarisa is our empire's savior she prevented a dangerous convict an imperial traitor from escaping the palace she is so dedicated to justice mm -hmm. so loyal to oleg bare's memory she would kill her own mentor in cold blood such courage i ling let a delicate sob shake her voice <laughs> such majesty i lurched <laughs> away and vomited into a nearby potted palm tree <laughs> uh i had forgotten that eileen's hollow is this gift of persuasion yeah speech so she's even offering to be like you know i could i can't make them love you but mm -hmm. i can get them to a place where they'd be willing to, to love give you. it a chance. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think Tara Sai, if I'm not mistaken, she's just like, yeah, no, I don't want to do it that way. But I, but I'm like, mm, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. There's a big part of me that's sort of like just getting them to the spot where they're willing to hear you out mm -hmm. might not be right? that that's, bad. That's going to be like the first big hurdle you got to get over. Yeah. And, and then when we actually, when she finds... Getting Tara side to this damn banquet, y'all. Oh my God, it's such a fucking <laughs> journey. There's a couple times where she's like at the doors and I'm like, is she going to bolt? Is she going to fucking leave before they get the door open? Like, yeah. Oh my God, the door too. Mm -hmm. That was wild. I didn't think of it when it was happening in the last book, right? Same. But when, but when she talks about, you know, these big heavy doors and how she burst through them at the end of the last book. They just open. Yeah. Easy peasy. These are big ass heavy doors out <laughs> that take like people with ropes and pulleys mm -hmm. <laughs> to mm -hmm. open and close. I also love to mention that there aren't a lot of doors at all. Yeah, cause because it's super impractical. It's just very impractical. It's too hot. They don't like the material. But these particular doors are very storied and have a whole sort of like mythology behind them. You know? Yeah. I, uh, and commanded the trees to make themselves in the doors or some shit. Like it's just <laughs> Can you imagine? You're just a tree having a nice day in the sun. And somebody comes over and is like, all right, I'm going to need you to stop this. Flatten yourself out and be a square for the rest of your life. Oh, by the way, this will also kill you and you will be dead. And we'll use your dead body. Right? <laughs> just truly. It must be very undignified to, to be a tree. Listen, I honestly, we talk about their majesty, and you know, but that's like when they're alive. 
What's their cut? You're just what, stacking bones. What we do to trees, considering what they do for us and how we repay them. Yeah. If I, tree, it's a real if giving I, tree situation. Oh my God. <laughs> book. I hope, I really hope that they don't make little kids read that book anymore. I saw an edited version that somebody did and it was beautiful. They changed the story up a lot and made it into something that was a much better lesson. Oh, really? Yeah. And it, I, I had shared it way a ways back, but I'll try and find it and send it to you because I think you would enjoy it. But yeah, it's a fucked up way to yeah. tell people to be. Yeah. Like I remember getting that assigned to me at a very young age and just being like, oh, this is great. And then reading it like later mm -hmm. and being like, oh, this is not great at all. This is where it all this started. Is, this is awful. <laughs> Stop giving this to children, please. I really internalized some, some shit from this tree. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> What a fucking disservice that was. Jesus Christ. Uh, Just give it myself until I die. Are you happy now? <laughs> was it enough? Did I give you enough? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I just pictured Tony Soprano's mother go to the kitchen, get the knife out of the roast. And drive it into my heart. <laughs> oh, fucking live. Oh, Ugh. she was a... Uh... She is a fucking black cloud of just like, god damn. That was a convincing what, performance. What genius casting that was. Right? Genius. Did you watch that fucking uh, Saints of Newark? Pre no. Prequel? Uh-uh. It wasn't very good. But Yeah, the... I heard. But the woman they got to play Liv, I want to, um, she just did a really, really good job. Like playing a, a, a young Tony Soprano mom. Yeah. And she looked a lot like her. And she just, she really fucking nailed it. The casting of that movie is really good. The movie is not great, but the casting is really good. I get so <laughs> mad when that's what happens. Do you get to, like, mm -hmm. casting being, like, so on point, but then things don't come together and you're like... But they look mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and they act right. Why couldn't yeah. you do anything with that? I get yeah. so mad. It's, uh, yeah, you guys should, you, especially because I know Owen likes this, but you guys should watch it so you can hate it. <laughs> but uh, but the, yeah, like the guy that got to play Junior, Uncle June, mm -hmm. so good. It was like fucking perfect casting. That's so sad. But yeah, it was super disappointing. Anyway. Um, anyway, mm -hmm. indeed. Okay, so. She has this moment where she uh, drinks some stuff for her nausea. G is looking her over to see if she's sick. And he's like, what can we do? You're clearly not okay. And she asks if they can all come with her to the banquet. And I Ling is like, that's not what this is all supposed to be about, though. Like, yeah. you're supposed to go in there without attachments visibly because you're so – being yeah. like supposed to be encouraging them to become yeah. your attachments yeah i love that she says you can't go in and hide behind your old you know people you gotta mm -hmm. go in so you can make like new she calls them like new friends which feels like a real understated way yes to talk about what's happening here um there was uh there was another line too what the fuck was i about to mention um god damn it it flew in and flew out maybe it'll come back well, this is when uh, Ai Ling talks about how they didn't take you that seriously, and then you killed your own mentor. They're scared of you, which is way more useful. People can't love someone they don't respect, and mm. fear is a step in the right direction. So this mm. is when G is like, can I talk to her by myself? And this is when he tells her, you don't have to go. Um. And he basically, like, the conversation sort of boils down to him because she's like, I'm always going to be difficult because I am at risk of being killed in a way that other empresses have not been. And I am, I was born a problem, right. basically. Right. I love how much he doesn't want to tell her that because she's like, cause she talks about this wall that he puts up. 
that comes sometimes when he's afraid of being like too angry yeah or too upset or too emotional and he doesn't want to like lose control and she feels like him kind of shut down and she's like no 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 you're going to tell me the hard thing that you don't want to tell me mm-hmm. and he and he has to and then that's when she's like oh yeah i'm actually much more vulnerable uh i'm in a really particular situation because i don't have my people around me i don't have my immunities Mm -hmm. and there are a lot of people that are against me um which i had also not thought about the fact that she's so vulnerable oh that's what i was going to mention they they there's there's a quick little line about after she she after the emperor's murdered and she sort of announced to the world as being also being a ray bearer they put her through these trials (laughs) oh my god <laughs> right i forgot about this <laughs> and it's like a really quick line but it's like she has to walk across hot coals she has to drink like this oil pelican oil pelican oil and mm-hmm. then there's a there's a third one that i forget but they are supposed to prove that she really has the ray right yeah but, the, but they're all just like like myths like legend has it that only a ray bear can drink the oil you know yeah I mean? it's like enough to convince people who are already superstitious i guess mm, but not based in like anything for real like as far as i'm concerned she has the mask she could just do the thing that's right that's it right one would think <laughs> yeah she can make it flash she says the word and things mm. happen like i would have thought that would have been Plenty. I thought, I thought we but, were good, but yeah, to, to find out that like afterwards, you know, in between books, there was this whole like song and dance that she had to go through to, uh, and she had to be willing to participate. Otherwise, you know, mm-hmm. that would have just been an excuse because she says that they were looking for any excuse to deny her. Yeah. Which I mean, you know what? What am I talking about? I was about to say, guys get over it and then i'm just like of course they're not gonna get over it we don't get over fucking anything no we don't no especially when it comes to ceding power to somebody else no and women god fucking forbid (laughs) you know they was lined up too deep you know waiting to to like you know prove that she was an imposter or a fraud or something Mm -hmm. so um (laughs) 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 okay so you uh, think I was foolish. You think I should have let Thaddeus alone um, say it. And he, he kisses her and then says, I think you should get used to people dying for you. And you'll have to prepare for everyone loving you too. So then we go to chapter five. And she is in front of the doors with Dio. And Dio looks like shit. He, he, oh, it's heartbreaking. I hate this. He starts, at one point, he's talking about how he doesn't feel as sad as he thinks he should feel about losing his father and also also Thaddeus. And they are, uh, it's heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. And um, he talks about how he didn't really know his father that well. But he, he says thought, my father didn't let me know him, which I appreciated yeah. it being phrased that way. Yeah. And there was this idea of like, well, I thought there was going to be more time, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and then uh, Tarasai says uh, she starts talking about how Lynn, you know, killed her mother and how she has to forgive him every day. Like, every day I have to wake up and choose forgiveness, you know, for that. Even though I know he didn't mean to kill her. He didn't realize he was killing her. And then she said something about Tadayo, about how, and if you have to forgive me every day, I would understand. Or something, something along those lines. Mm -hmm. And he is not here for that. No. Whatsoever. I love how he loves her. He (laughs) is the most faithful unflappable mm. supporter mm. i mean dio is just everything she, I she love him. make she makes a really poorly thought out joke oh my god about Tarzai. maybe not not coming back and he shuts that shit down like the fuck did you just say about not coming Ooh. back 
You fucking promised me you were coming. Like he is. Mm. It was. She, like, she's she just was trying to be abused. cute, and he's, he's just like, nope, mm, 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 mm. nope. This is not the time for cuteness. <laughs> <laughs> that shit is not funny. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. Mm. Um, this, the whole thing, I just feel really bad about how much he is being put through and how he's just such a good boy and he is really the ringer, you know, the only one going through even more than him is Tari Sai. Yeah. Oh my God. When she talks about putting, uh, you know, caressing his cheek and she realizes how their features are so similar Mm -hmm. and, and I'm just, oh, it's you guys. Yeah. So good so good it's almost like like how did i not see it before of course look at us we both like have our grandfather's you know eyes or chin or whatever she's talking about and you're just like oh this is so good (laughs) um okay so i forgot about how she starts crying and like some of her makeup comes off and (laughs) eiling is like oh you're gonna ruin your hey actually this could work vulnerability that's great yeah you're she, trying to get them to think that you're, you know. She, she's like an agent or a PR person. She's or fucking she's- Olivia Pope for sure. <laughs> I love this. And Patrick's in the chat saying Dio is the most shining example of non toxic masculinity. Love him so much. 100%. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. Um, and this is when she brings up about like, potentially getting people to give her a chance and using her hallow to do that no i shook my head if i'm going to have my own counsel i want it to be like ours a life we chose a family families there, aren't usually chosen eileen pointed out we just got lucky there's something going on with eileen she shot an inscrutably affectionate glance at dio and her mm-hmm. words rang ominously as drum beats vibrated through the mm-hmm. ground I don't know how inscrutable it was. I think we all know what's going on. Mm. <laughs> I don't think it's a mystery. <laughs> and then there's like a moment with her again a little bit later um, where they are speaking through the ray and she has a moment where she starts to share something. I Ling does. Mm-hmm. And then she like slams the door shut really yeah. unexpectedly. Yeah. And I'm just like, what's that? though lady like i i my assumption was she has got feelings for dio you know but i'm hoping it's not anything super sinister like now i'm just like oh what if you know but but i'm not going down that road as far as i'm concerned yeah i mean like i think it feels like she's got something some feelings for him but the thing that she slams shut on is her talking about how grief is complicated do you remember that? Uh, That's the thing that she said. And like, it feels like she's about to open up more and then just really shuts it down. And. Oh, right. Right. Um, So that's the thing that I'm just sort of like, what's going yeah. on there? Is it just it's, like something too personal or. Yeah. yeah. Grief isn't simple. She tells him. And then she watches him with pity and another emotion. I can't quite name is what Tara Sai is talking about. Eileen. Mm. And then the air crackled as I felt her reach for Dio with the ray, and then she stopped. So she was about to say something to Dio, mm-hmm. and then it's just like, no, I'm not going to. Yeah, as though she were afraid of what her thoughts might reveal. Hmm. Mm. I don't know. And then, and then. <laughs> Dio doesn't notice. <laughs> fucking Dio. I maybe this is why he's such a sweet bun because he just doesn't fucking pay attention to shit. So you know, he is able to give everybody a little bit more grace because he isn't watching them and trying to analyze everything they're doing and saying all the time. It's probably a very healthy way to live. I mean as, probably as, a, as opposed to how I live my life. Mm. <laughs> and then they, they're all trying to like make Dio feel better about not having like these intense feelings of grief and sadness. Uh, one of them is like, because he's talking about how he doesn't have any real feelings about that. As he says, I haven't, he's numb. And one of them is like, well, he killed your dad. And he's like, yeah, no, but it's not that though. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Wild. Mm. Um, 
Okay, so they go in and she does this thing that Eiling has I, I don't know if it was like her idea exactly, but she's the one who gives the signal for Tari Sai to do it. Um she raises her hands and signals for all of the little tsutsu sprites to come in through the windows and align themselves on the ceiling in the formations of the stars in the mm. sky outside which is so cool yep took what? A, took a lot of practice too to train them to evidently do this yes because this is not like the, how they normally get down mm -hmm. but this is done and i love it she just comes right out and says it like this is just a flex yes <laughs> Yes, there's a couple of people, like, she describes how some folks just think it's beautiful and, and are impressed with it, and other people are like, um, that's an army on the ceiling. Yeah, yeah. Like, like some, some people, like, oh, it's really cool, but it's also kind of a threat. Like, what else can I do? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, there's this mention, too, that, and I don't think this came up before, so they get to the feast, right? The, you know, with all the, the people from all the emissaries are there. Mm -hmm. But her and Dio, they can't eat anything or drink anything because it's considered a uh, a weakness for a ray bearer to eat in public, eat or drink in public. So, or, or relieve themselves as well. I hate this so much. Right? So, oh so my God, just they, fucking kill me. Right? So they take something like a little tincture. She says she doesn't need it because she's so fucking nervous. She's not going to eat anyway. But they take like a little tincture or something so that they don't eat or drink or anything for the whole fucking like and this is to lend itself to the mystique of the how they're like more than human right mm -hmm. they don't need they don't even need to nourish themselves like regular fucking peasants right i don't go to the bathroom i don't need to drink i don't need to eat i just exist on the ray and it's <laughs> it's, it's wild but it's also like it feels really right it feels like it would work. You know, mm -hmm. it does. It really, really does. And I, it, it made me think about, I don't know if this is something I made up in my head or something I got from a movie or a TV show, but I feel like the idea that people that are above us, you know, like, especially like religious leaders, you know, mm -hmm. they, they don't need to eat and drink like us regular peasants. They're so, yes. they're so close to God. They don't even need all that, you know? So God you know, just feeds them directly right? through some sort of <laughs> conduit, <di> divine connection. <laughs> so it really did feel like, yeah, this seems like something that would be a real fucking thing. <laughs> yeah. This, uh, the thing that got me when I first read it, and I think it's because they're not supposed to even get up to use the bathroom, but it's like they give us a tincture to suppress our appetites, or you could just eat first. You could just eat before everybody just, else and then, then I, go in and be like, oh, I don't even need to eat. But no, nope. you're just not supposed to eat at all, which just feels really mean. Like, yeah, like, like if you're in charge, you can. who's going to tell you you can't have a snack right? before, the, before the thing? But I wonder if, uh, like, if you eat and drink before the big feast, then you might have to go to the bathroom. In the middle That's of the what I'm feast. thinking. <laughs> like, but also, then just say you have to do something else. Don't say, uh, "I got to run to the restroom." <laughs> Don't say that and be like, "I must go commune with the spirits or whatever <laughs> other divine." bullshit and say that and be like oh that room no that's not a door to a bathroom that's a door to my temple my spaceship that's how i get the god exactly <laughs> a porcelain temple um but yeah i uh i understand that the thought behind it i just feel like there has to be a better way i mean if you can make a, a like a little thing to to suppress my appetite, can't you make me a little thing that just like feels like a full full course meal, like and lembus a bread in uh, the <laughs> Lord of the Rings? <laughs> One bite's enough to eat, fill the stomach of a grown man. Something like that. Is that what I, you mean? Yeah, why that not? sort of thing. Am I, I the like... nerd in the in the room? <laughs> I mean, they have all of this stuff at their disposal. I feel like you couldn't just come up with a little little pocket size little. Little nugget, you know, little hot pocket size. <laughs> Treat. 
can you imagine coming into this glorious room with all of this like roast meat and it plantains? It good too, right? And they were like, here's your pre-feast <laughs> snack and it's a fucking hot pocket that's like still frozen in the middle. All this gourmet shit and you're hearing beep as the microwave dings in the background. Has God with my hot pockets. I'll be right back. <laughs> the holy hot pocket. <laughs> All right, Easter dinner set. <laughs> done and done. <laughs> oh God, today. <laughs> the, uh, a spoiler for um True Blood, for those who have not watched the show True Blood, but there's a character named Jesus. In true blood. Oh my god. And he dies. And somebody in a true blood group I'm in was posting about him today. No, no. But I didn't see the group name and they just oh, said, no. I really liked Jesus's character and I'm super upset that they killed him off. <laughs> no. And I was like, well, Easter's coming, I guess. <laughs> and then I really <laughs> You should have been like, don't worry, he'll be back in three days. A twist is coming. <laughs> they changed up the script at the last second. He signed a contract to come back for the next season. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, so yeah, I uh, I finally figured out what they meant, but I was like, ow. <laughs> um. Anyway, okay, okay. So they're they're all eating this food and uh, being very holy. And there's like this song that they sing about what's the point of an empty throne? Do we have somebody to fill it? <laughs> and <laughs> and she finally does the beginning of her speech. And what sort of uh, she has one of those like she has a stone that projects her voice. It's like sonorous. In mm -hmm. Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. And she welcomes everybody and hands around this basket of cola nuts that every, each like person from each country has to touch to accept the welcome and like agree to be here, basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, when she says, I want to be the last redemptor to ensure that no child, era, or songlander is ever sacrificed again. Here, here, Dio interrupted with eager applause. Everybody else is just like, I guess. The guests <laughs> awkwardly followed suit. I was so mad about this. She's over here talking about how maybe we'll never have to sacrifice another child. And nobody else is like enthused about just nope. applauding that fucking statement. Nope. How dead inside be do you have to be? All they can think about is how they are at risk now because she has upended this fucking apple cart of despicableness that has been going for just generations. Mm. You know, all they can think about is how she has now put the, the people that they care about, their children, you know, I at, at risk. And, um, yeah, it's, 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 you know, I don't want to sidetrack us too much. <laughs> But there's been a lot going on in this country in the United States, you know, recently. Uh, there's been a lot going on this last couple of days. I don't know if you've been watching what's been happening in Tennessee. Uh, a little bit, but not closely, I'll admit, because I read a bit and I got so yeah. upset that I so. noped out. Um, yeah. I was a coward. So they, you know, we had a, a, a yet another school shooting. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and in response, there's been a a push for you know gun reform, uh, and then also Tennessee is doing all like like while this shooting has happened and is putting like a, a spotlight back on gun control, Tennessee has also been doing all like the banning drag banning books, don't say gay, like all that stuff has been going like full speed ahead. So they came to like a bit of a bit of a head over the last couple of days right and all of these kids again high school age kids just swarmed the capitol like a giant protest 
and um, three Democratic members of the legislator there got up and like spoke on behalf of these kids that are protesting. It was two black men and a white woman, three Democrats, and two black men got ex- got expelled, booted. Yeah. Um, and we just have a, the way we deal with like power and, and what people are willing to do to protect their own little small pieces of power Mm -hmm. and just like sacrifice everybody else. Yeah. You know, when you think about what the story has been about so far, you know, a part of what the story has been about with like Songland paying the price for everybody else's comfort and prosperity, you know, for mm-hmm. hundreds of years. And it seems like, Oh wow, that's crazy. This is, you know, fantasy. This is high fantasy, you know, <laughs> but it's fucking not though. It's really not that yeah. fucking far fetched, you know, that is, that is how, we are set up and we talked about this in the first book how like we we don't like to think about what our conveniences really cost yeah you know uh because then we're all like sort of complicit you know then we 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 are we all are we can't you know can't help it we we all are we all participate in the system we're all complicit in some degree but when you think about how she stands up and tells all of these people in this in this banquet hall, what she wants to do, what she's trying to accomplish and fucking nobody wants to applaud or clap. All they can think about is how it's impacting them, you know, and how it's putting them at risk. Yeah. Uh, And it just, I don't know. I guess you're (laughs) right. You know, it just, it's, mm. And, and, and how like resentful they are that she has like interrupted their system. You know, she's disrupted it for like a, just a minute. She hasn't even changed anything yet. Yeah. She's just disrupted it a little bit. <laughs> and I think that's also an interesting point is like, if nobody talks about it, then we can all sort of have this tacit agreement that we're not going to acknowledge the horror of what we're doing fully. Mm-hmm. But if you just, do a whole thing and bring it up then now we have to face the fact that we're literally choosing to stand here and be like no but we should keep doing that though Mm -hmm. and we don't like it so we're gonna put the anger that we feel toward ourselves at somebody and it's Mm -hmm. not gonna be us yep yep patrick in the chat just mentioned also she's like a teen and you know what yeah because we were saying earlier like terasai and diodon they're kids yeah but but like often I don't know if the author intended it to be like if I don't know what her thinking is, why she made the characters the age she made them. I don't know if she was trying to what she was what she meant or if she did it on a purpose or whatever. But when you think about uh any type of sort of counter revolutionary or, you know, revolutionary period kind of thing, there's it's often youth led. You know, throughout yeah. history across cultures it tend you know, uh there's something about that age where you feel like it's possible Mm -hmm. to enact change and you're not as afraid you know you're not used to seeing things get rejected for no good reason and you're not discouraged immediately like i am yeah and you have the and this is gonna sound like a shot but i swear to god i don't mean it when you aren't tied to like a bullshit job and bullshit rent mm-hmm. bull, you know what i mean yeah then then you're freed up to care in a big way and be willing to take big risks which is one of the reasons why it's so important to make sure that as we get older we get tied to these other things you know mm-hmm. that, that then shackle us it's like when you think about the summer of 2020 and people talk about like the summer it's George Floyd and everything, right? Yeah. And how every and how like bonkers everything happened and how many people were in the streets. But also 
people were having their basic needs met in a way that they hadn't ever had before. Mm -hmm. Lots and lots of people were like getting, you know, unemployment and stimulus money and, 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 and not being tied to their bullshit jobs because everything was closed. And what did people do when they had time and a little bit of freedom and a little bit of money security? They were willing to put themselves like fucking on the front line for real shit. All it took was like an inch of like livable, breathable space. Yeah. And people were willing to do that. You know, mm -hmm. it's like the minute you get us off of the hamster wheel, as much as we talk about how much people suck, and I really do think people suck, but <laughs> <laughs> there is something about humanity that, that like, if given the opportunity, so many more people than we think are ready and willing to do the hard things. Mm -hmm. They just, they just need an opportunity to do it. They just need like some sort of safety and you know what I mean? Yes. And we will probably never, ever see that again because they saw what we had, what happened. That's exactly what I feel about it is like that a big part of being like, Oh, we're not doing any more stimulus checks and we're opening things back up was a panic reaction to mm -hmm. seeing that we all yep. were focused and yep taking action and they were like oh no 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 absolutely not can't have that yeah 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 and it didn't take much like it, like they, they they act like they gave us so much money like there were other countries in the world where people were getting like like a lot of money mm -hmm. we, we got we got like what two stimulus checks yeah for like you a know? couple grand each mm -hmm. like it wasn't even no nope. that's not like yep <laughs> there's people, there's a running joke in King of the Hill where people get like a fifteen thousand dollar payout from getting falling on concrete and say they never have to work another day in their lives. Lucky, I slipped on some pee pee at the Megalomart. <laughs> there, that's that's one of them, and uh, that is not even close to where we were. And yet everybody acts like I can't believe we just let's take a look at those those loans. So let's take a look at some of the loans that people mm -hmm. took out just for, you know, for that, reasons that didn't have to pay that shit back either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How just about that? saying, how about that? But yeah, you know, like there's some countries where people were getting like $3,000 a month mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, for extended periods of time. People here were getting like six hundred dollars a week in unemployment, and and people lost their fucking minds. Six hundred dollars in unemployment—that's outrageous. People are out here still talking about how ever, nobody wants to work because everybody's on unemployment. And I'm just like, that's been over for a fucking two years now, guys. Like, what are you talking about? I, I, I just can't believe yep. the the. Mm -mm. You know what? I'm not stopping. doing it. I'm stopping. It. I'm stopping. <laughs> I swear, I'm stopping. Okay. <laughs> So, I uh, the Abiku won't accept me. I went on not unless I anoint a council of the twelve rulers of Aritzar. I know it's a lot. What I'm asking, a pact for life, binding our minds, our blood. But I've been in your shoes. I'm an anointed one too, after all. So I know how daunting that feels. But if we don't try, I inhaled. Then bit down on the kernel of dried kuso kuso I'd been hiding under my tongue. The fragrant herb went sharply to my head, and a green haze crept at the edges of my vision. The hallow flowing in my veins, the gift from my father, the alibato who drew stories from the earth, boiled beneath my skin, begging to leech memories from every surface I touched. Instead, I used my temporarily heightened power to conjure a memory and send it as a mass hallucination into the brows of every guest at my table. The massacre at Ibujo with visions of bodies littering the temple floor, ripped apart by vengeful creatures from the underworld. So she said, we're, we're going to make this an immersive experience. Yep. <laughs> Buckle Can up. Can you imagine if somebody was able to project the memory of being in a mass shooting? Listen, we can't even fucking be honest and show like and talk about in the real way what the damage that these types of assault weapons do to the human body. Mm -hmm. If we could do like we could do this, you know, we could do it this way, but we could, sure. we could share that information in a real way 
and we don't. You know, yeah, and we like we talk about like the way it looks on movies and television, you know, to get shot, right? Mm -hmm. What it looks like on the movies, you know, like it goes in, you know, one little hole and then maybe it goes out your back. If you watch Law and Order, it gets lodged in a wall, you know, whatever, <laughs> you know, but these fucking things rip these bodies, especially when you talk about children, yeah, rip their bodies to shreds. And we have no idea what it looks like because they won't tell us. Mm -hmm. They don't show us. So, like, if we could see the real horror of it just one time, you know? Yeah. But they don't show us that so that we can all be in denial about what is really happening. Like, the fact that I keep listening to my friends who have children talk about their babies doing these active shooter drills. Mm. And... I know I'm in a I'm in a place of like I'm outside of it. I don't have any children. I know it's not part of my everyday reality. I don't have to think about it if I don't want to, and I don't want to think about it. I sure don't either. But I cannot. I don't know how they do it. I don't. I don't. I don't know how the kids do it. I don't know how the parents do it. I don't. I don't know. Like if I don't know. Yeah. I don't when know. you get a like brochure that's got here's a backpack with a metal plate in it that your kid can hold up as a shield what are we doing and there was an article that came up in my memories recently do you remember this thing when it happened when these teachers were being put through like drills but they were being shot with pellets that like drew blood no and were being like mentally the, the people were in tears and being screamed at and it was like a required thing that they go through and they wound up like filing a lawsuit Holy against shit. the people who were supposedly like teaching them because it was the kind of thing that would serve no actual purpose like they're not getting shot with pellets so what is this like you're acting like well you need to learn to withstand the pain They'd be dead. What are you talking about? That's not what this is even about. And these people are getting paid like 30 grand a year and you're subjecting them to what's essentially Jesus torture Christ. and being like, well, this is part of the job. Like, th and this is what we're acting like is normal now. It's insane. I just, it, it's just, it's fucking, I don't know what the fuck we're doing. Yeah. I, I just, I don't, I don't know. And there's like, I know we're not doing it on this podcast, but it's just really like, I don't, what are we doing? Yeah. What are we doing? Yeah. But you know what? It's not, it's not the children of any of the people who are, you know, mm -hmm. refusing to do anything meaningful, you know, in the law. It's not, it's not their kids yet. Yet. I'm finding the thing. Here it is. It was Indiana. Um, the terrified teachers were asked to go into a room, crouch down, and were shot execution style. Mm -mm. The projectiles weren't bullets, but when the teachers were struck with the air pellets, it, they were left with uh, bleeding and with bruises. It didn't make sense to us at all, said Dan Hole of the executive director of the Indiana State Teachers Association. I question the premise, but I think it was intended to simulate what you might experience in an active shooter situation. He added, saying he didn't know what the trainers were hoping to accomplish. Jesus Sheriff Bill Brooks told the Indy Star it had conducted act active shooter drills at the school in question for the past several years and had used the airsoft gun that was used in the January 4th training. It's a soft round projectile. The key here is soft which we all know about like rubber bullets, which are allegedly also soft and what those can do. So let's mm -hmm. not fucking pretend here, folks. I don't um, understand what this was supposed to accomplish. And that's exactly my question. And let's see notes. The teacher's organization voiced concerns and a meeting was arranged to discuss these matters. Twin Lakes looks forward to continuing its important partnership with the Twin Lakes classroom teachers organization. <laughs> The incident gained widespread attention when it was referenced in a hearing from the Indiana State Senate over a proposed education bill. 
the ISTA tweeted about the testimony shared by unnamed teachers. Um, and then we've got some tweets and stuff. They were told not to tell anyone what happened, mm. which is highly suspicious. Mm -hmm. Teachers waiting outside that heard the screaming were brought into the room four at a time and the shooting process was repeated. Oh my God. What the fuck? It's like we all, these people that come up with these kind of training programs and like, like they think they're in a fucking movie. Right? Yeah. I, I've got news for you guys. Making teachers bleed and cry is not a flex. That's just you being a fucking sicko, weirdo, freak. So, you know. Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, we need somebody to fucking power blast the fucking real immersive experience into everybody who's sitting in a position of power to make like real substantive changes because this shit is it, it can't keep being this this can't be it it ain't it this ain't it chief <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is fucking fuck taint <laughs> <laughs> uh, i don't know what it is but i know what it taint <laughs> I think from now on, whenever I want to say it, that ain't it, Chief. I'm just going to say taint. And you're just going to have to know what it means. So anybody who skips an episode and jumps in and hears me just say taint and feels a little bit puzzled, I'm sorry. You're going to have to figure it out. So what do you think everybody's reaction is going to be to her doing this? Because she doesn't give any warning at all. I I have to imagine the whole room goes nuts. Like, first of all, to be, we haven't seen her do anything quite this aggressive. No, right? never. You know, we, we've seen her pluck out memories and, and kind of put in good memories, but she just sort of psychically assaulted a room full of people that she's trying to convince to love her. Very much. I feel like this could go either way, <laughs> you know, uh, there have got to be some people who feel like that was like, you didn't get my consent for that. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's not cool. Uh, and she's going to be like, and did those children give their consent mm -hmm. to be thrown into a right. fucking pit? I hope that's what she comes back with. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yeah, so like some people are probably going to be really upset. I, but I think hopefully because you, because what she's trying to do is like, like, force them into action like this is really serious yeah we have to act this is this is what is at stake i need you to understand what will happen if we don't if we don't get our shit together you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i feel like it's gonna be like everybody just be like what the fuck <laughs> and then maybe a couple people will just be like this was you know I can't abide it. You had no right, you know, mm -hmm. but maybe, but maybe there'll be one or two people who will receive the message the way she intends it and will be like, you know what? Yes, I am on board. So I, I hope that's the takeaway. I don't, I don't expect everybody in the room to be convinced, but I hope she's getting like two, maybe three really good people who will be like, yes, this is a fucking righteous thing we're doing and mm -hmm. I want to be a part of it. Because that's really all I can hope for is maybe like two or three people. Because <laughs> I don't want to hope, you know, I can't, I can't imagine more than that. <laughs> I completely understand. Yeah. Don't get your hopes up too high. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know. Maybe uh, some people are going to have to sleep on it. They'll react badly and then they'll have like a week of just it haunting them and go back. And, and yeah. And like, I feel like some people are going to be like, if there were some people in, in attendance who weren't seeing it for her you know came in like i don't see it for her and if she does this they might double down mm -hmm. and then i want to mention really quick before we wrap up there was a mention of someone out in the world crocodile crocodile mm -hmm. yeah some sort of it keep calling him a troublemaker yeah maya zato mentions him and jeet mentions him and then it's like don't worry about it, i'll take care of him so this is very interesting. This is like somebody is out in the streets rabble rousing. I love a good rabble rousing. Rabble. <laughs> so it sounds like 
Uh, I, we don't have a lot of information yet, so I'm curious if this is like, like a like a local, you know, warlord type of thing, like, or is it somebody with really grand like designs? You know, mm. is it someone that's been emboldened by like, oh, we got a chick now, and first the whole system's going to shit. We don't have to, you know, or yeah. is it, or is it more of like a like a like a Robin Hood, you know? Because as we're learning more about what shit looks like on the ground, we're seeing how unfair some things are, right? Yeah. So so the crocodile could be like your local fucking socialist friend. You know? You know what I mean? Like he might like be a bad yep. guy. He might actually be about some real shit that's like ends up being like, oh, oh, okay. So I'm really I don't like I'm torn, but I'm kind of excited. <laughs> like I don't, I don't know which way it's gonna go. But yeah, I was like, I like, like, what if like he's out here once so I'm for the people, you know, I'm like, okay, the people could use some help. People could <laughs> fucking use some help. I like the idea of him looking around and saying, taint. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, with that. Welcome to all of my new patrons. This week we have Chris Cook, Zeus Invictus, Madeline Burkholder, and Anna Martin. Welcome so much to all of you. Welcome. Appreciate you all. I hope that you guys are enjoying the patrons only content. Some of you have signed up to get the postcard in for every month, and uh, I'm hoping that you will enjoy those as well. And Miles and I are about to embark on a couple of the freestanding stories in the Sookie series before we get on to the next book. We're going to be starting book six, and that's a real good one. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was one other thing about the uh, the becoming a patron thing that, oh, the Harry Potter feed. I posted screenshots how to get that into your podcatcher if you don't know how to do that and also an article with uh, screenshots for other programs because I only have so many on my phone that I could personally screenshot. So if you are having trouble with that, find the Harry Potter tag on Patreon and it will bring you to that post with the pictures and hopefully that will clear it up for you. Um, I think that was everything. I feel like I'm sure there's like another thing. I'm sure of it. I'm sure. I'm certain. We're, we're starting a, what you call it tomorrow? Mm-hmm. That thing. Yeah. That's what? exciting. Oh, a feast for crows. Yes, that's the one. Thank you. Yes, I did mm. not. I don't know why I didn't think about our podcast. I I don't know. What's, what are you thinking about? Something non-podcast? I was thinking about like, <laughs> uh, like something private in our... Did you know the succession's on again? Yes. I haven't watched the new season yet. I just missed that it was back on. And I was the one talking about being all excited over it. And I, then I fucking forgot. I think it, I, I think we're only one episode behind. Maybe two. I already, I only saw one episode. I have to rewatch so. the last season before I start this one. I no, can't just don't. like, no. They're going to give you that recap. They're going to give you that five to seven minute recap. It'd be good. Mm. Be good. I thought I was going to rewatch too. Completely unnecessary. Okay. I knew exactly where we left off. <laughs> okay well i may just rewatch because i really enjoy that show but yeah, i may not have fun. i may not have time we'll fair. see <laughs> um anyway but yeah that's uh that's the thing that's going on with me and rashawn and i am currently working on co- covering jane the virgin for spoil me which i highly recommend guys it's super fun if you haven't watched it already it's a good time and also i just finished hellbent which oh my god those books are so good Ninth House and Hellbent. Anybody who likes magic and bitchy women, may I please introduce you to Alex Stern of Ninth House. And that is my last thing that I'm going to mention. All right, everybody. We love you. Thank you very much to Patrick for hanging out with us in the chat. Until next time. Tulum, motherfuckers. Bye, guys. Capitalism is a crime.